Hey, this is Mead for AUSquared.com. Uh, we're going to do another uh, learn art response today. Um, and this one is uh, this guy's third attempt to learn drawing um, using, using digital stuff. Um, but he's drawing a raven, which is a uh, interesting problem. Uh, so we'll get right to it. Uh, have a look at uh, uh, his uh, his drawing here first. Um, the uh, the drawing is like definitely recognizable as a raven, um, which is uh, which is good. Um, that's always something that you want to go for in drawing. I know it sounds stupid to say it like that, but you do want to create a likeness, um, whether you're drawing landscape. Uh, people, whatever. Um, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of detail. The proportions are basically correct. Um, you're starting to get into some texture, but, um, uh, you'll notice that the, the two major problems are that, um, there's a heavy outline and that, um, a raven is, is black. Um, it's a dark, dark bird. Um, and this is basically like, uh, a white bird. Um, so, uh, we're gonna explore some ideas of, of how and, and why to sort of make that happen. Um, I've uh, picked a model, um, and of course, you know, drawing from a photograph is is always tough. It, it's exponentially more difficult than uh, uh, drawing from life um because you have to do this sort of translation where you go okay well the photograph is 2d and then i have to make it 3d in my head and then i have to put it back onto the 2d page but actually make it seem three-dimensional so when you're looking at a three-dimensional object you're going uh 3d to 2d uh, which actually looks like three dimensions so you're taking out a a step and that that conversion that you make um, is uh, much more uh, much more difficult um, when you're drawing from a photo that being said I'm gonna go ahead and, and draw from from a photo anyway um, and uh, and see what happens so um, the first thing you want to you want to lay out whenever you're you're drawing is sort of a, a, a gestural line um, when you're drawing um, like vertebrate animals, um, especially humans, whatever, uh, it's a good idea to basically like um, more or less start with the the, the head or, or the spine and and go from there. Um, that way, you can kind of uh, express a little bit of of uh, the life immediately. And then um, with uh, birds and stuff, their anatomy is kind of obscured by, uh, their, um, their feathers. So you have to kind of know a little bit about, um, a little bit about the anatomy and how that works. Um, you know that a head is basically, uh, spherical. Um, so what you want to do as you begin drawing is is um, think in terms of form. So when you draw the head, you're not thinking, oh, I'm drawing a egg shape or a circle to represent the head. You're thinking, I am drawing like this spherical uh, egg shape object in a three-dimensional space. So if you can if you can feel through that on the page or digitally or whatever, uh, you're going to be in good, in good shape. So, um, immediately, uh, what I would do, um, uh, drawing a raven is, um, is kind of like pick out basically where the, the shadows are after I've blocked in the forms, pick out the darkest spots and kind of use the poster method, which is where you divide everything into either this is dark or this is light. Um, 
and then go ahead and uh, uh, cover up a good amount of the uh, of the form with some value. And the more specific you get with this, the uh, the better off you're going to be. So. And what helps you with the poster is if you kind of like squint at it, uh, you can see immediately what's in shadow and what is uh, is not. And uh, you don't have to be like too particular about edges yet. Um, that you can you can get a little more particular with later. So um, I'm going to kind of break a rule a little bit, like normally I would wait to do the poster for, for, for a bit, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and block it all in real fast. So this is, uh, this is really what was missing from, from uh, your, your drawing. Um, that we were looking at for critique, um, the idea that that a raven is is dark, and then this is something you want to do pretty much with uh, with every drawing you do from from here on out. Um, it's a step that uh, everyone goes through. What you're going to do later is you're going to kind of smooth out this tone as you as you add more more lines, um, make it seem uh, like more form more forms in space. Um, right now, I'm I'm not going to clean up the edge because I'm more concerned with uh, the uh, the form in the middle of it than I am with the edge. And each time you uh, you take a look. You're gonna have to be sure that you're uh, reobserving and adding more detail. So when I'm looking at this, I'm actually uh, mostly not looking at the page. I'm I'm like trying to keep an eye on uh, on the model just to see if I can catch any more details. Um, so already here you can kind of see like this is the light part, this is the dark part, um, but uh, the the value of the value scale of a raven is actually what we call low key. So if you had values going from really dark to really light to plain white of the paper here, uh, the Raven, for the most part, is going to end up on this part of the scale, right? From really dark to sort of a medium dark. And then the values in the middle are going to skip basically all the way over to the bright white because some of the feathers are kind of shiny. Um, so you're going to have to do what you can to sort of preserve those, those bright whites. Um, when you block in the eye, right, you got to think the eye more in terms of like the eye socket in the sphere because there's just going to be like a little bit of of uh, feather and, and skin over the eye and this goes for whatever you're whatever you're drawing whether it's uh, human animal anything um, I noticed that the uh, major dark parts are kind of like right along the edge of the beak. Um, right here, uh, sort of on the on the neck feathers. And here I'm just using kind of a, a B pencil, um, which is kind of a 
like right in the middle of between hard and soft. Um, and then um, because this isn't going to get me as dark as I want, I'm going to go ahead and skip and use like a 5B because um, this is going to deposit like more uh, more graphite down on the paper. It's going to get darker much faster, which uh, you're going to want when you're drawing something low key. So high key would be the opposite. You know, you might have like uh, a different type of uh, situation where, you know, the uh, most of the drawing exists in these subtle values close to the white of the page, right? But uh, definitely not this this one. So generally whenever you're drawing like animals and people, um, what's going to make a difference is, is the uh, head and eyes. Because we kind of fixate that as, uh, as sort of fixate on that as social creatures. One thing to notice up to this point is that I haven't even like really touched the the outline except as like a basic block in. Uh, I want to save working on the outline for later. And I haven't done any details either. I haven't like you know really worked on on like the texture of the feathers yet because uh, that's something you know that that you want to that you want to save towards the end once you have sort of the values like blocked in and the forms sort of like described and working. Um, here I'm going to start working down into uh, into the neck and on the uh, and on the shoulder of the bird. Um, and I'm just going to kind of like you know switch back and forth between different uh, hardnesses of, of pencils. And every time I take a look at this, I'm saying, you know, okay, well, here's like, here's another detail. Here's something that I missed, like the first go around. And I'm adding, like, and reobserving, changing, changing how the forms inter interrelate. I'm getting more and more specific as I go along. And generally, what you want to do is uh, is work through the uh, the whole the whole figure uh, in a pass. So you can see what I did on the first pass is I went out kind of like blocked in a, a rough sort of like uh, set of like contours and forms um, and then the second pass I, I drew in the poster and now I'm on the uh, on the third pass um, uh, heightening some values and like uh, reobserving some some details And then what I'm doing too is I'm I'm uh, making my poster uh, a little more uh, a little more sophisticated. The shadow edge, you know, it started out pretty uncomplicated, but now it's getting uh, more and more detailed and specific as I notice more details in the image in the model. Again, I haven't touched anything so so detailed as uh, as a contour an outline and I haven't touched anything uh, towards the uh, feather texture that'll come pretty far down the uh, in the process and because I've blocked out the poster in uh, in sort of this uh, Light, lighter value, I have a lot of like flexibility to change it.
one of my drawing teachers actually uh, did uh, did a series of ravens um, at one point, and uh, he was kind of uh, saying that they did about a bunch of studies with uh, some of the more sophisticated bird species, and ravens were the only one that when they uh, you know had had like a pole and they tied uh, some food to a string hanging from that. Um, most birds uh, couldn't figure out how to do it. Some birds would figure out that they could bring the food closer by grabbing grabbing the string and pulling it up. But the raven was the only one that figured they could pull the string up with their beak, step on the string, and then pull it again until they got the food. So, of bird species, ravens are definitely the most some of the most intelligent. One of the problems with uh, uh, drawing from a photograph I'm encountering here, because uh, I can't see any detail within the shadow, but I know that the uh, that the wing sort of goes into the shadow before it overlaps. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to kind of like block out some uh, some deeper value uh, where there's some overlap in the uh, in the feathers. So that's something that kind of like comes with um, with drawing experience and you kind of like knowing that the photograph is is uh, compressing values together. So again, I'm just kind of like working through this first pass, getting the darks knocked way down. I'm just making marks all over the place because that's kind of how I do it. Your mark making style is up to you. You can do like kind of more um, form following stuff if you want. It's kind of how you begin to develop your own style with the marks. If you blend away your marks, you're blending away basically like all your personality in the drawing, which is, which is a shame. Everybody wants to bust out the blending stump immediately so they get like this continuous value and yeah it might look fine but you know you're you're also like killing some life. So, um, at this point, I've about gone through uh, three passes on this on this drawing, and uh, you can see that it's already starting to to sort of become uh, become very raven-like. Um, 
So one of the things you're going to start doing, uh, you know, as you get to this point is, uh, you need to work into the, into the background too, because for the, uh, for the whites to look really white, the highlights, you know, you're going to need, uh, the background to be a little bit dark. When you're doing a sketch, you know, you don't have to worry too much about like covering the whole sheet. If you're making like a finished uh, piece that you want it to be like totally awesome, you would uh, definitely want to go in and really cover the whole sheet of paper. Generally, when you fill in an outline, you don't want to you don't want to like follow the contour, like you know, make outline make uh, lines like that. If you make them going a different direction than the contour. Um, you're setting yourself up to use uh, the lines to actually pop out the form a little bit better. Because really, that's what it, what it, what drawing is all about is like using these techniques to like make forms pop forward. Now you notice you start to lose a little bit of the edge when when you do this, which is fine because at the end you'll come back and like heighten certain elements of the contour. And don't worry about your hand like smudging stuff at this stage um, because you know smudging will kind of blend out some of these uh, these heavy marks and you know cover up some of the uh, some of the areas that you don't want um, to be totally white. All right, so there we go. Uh, now we're gonna work into the uh, to the midtone and, and light sort of section, and this is where um, this is where a lot of the character of the bird is gonna come out. Um, so really, what you need to first do is pick out um, uh, pick out these the larger uh, sections of of wing texture that you want to work work on. Um, and kind of like block in where those are. So now that I've got those areas blocked in, I know that there are going to be some highlights right there. There's going to be a real bright highlight somewhere around here. There's actually one like right here, um, uh, right in this area. All right, so I'm going to keep drawing and, uh, and maybe even begin to knock into some uh, into some wing texture here. Maybe start um, picking out some individual feathers. And uh, to do this, you don't have to create like, um, every single feather on the bird. You just need a few to indicate that yes, you're, you're seeing them. Uh, and that'll give you like the idea of uh, of what's going on with it. So it's about creating more of a texture than it is about like getting all this obsessive detail in there, which you know you can totally do the obsessive detail. But uh, you want to make sure that overall everything is, is operating correctly first.
Um, at any rate, so this, um, I think I've, I've kind of like indicated the direction that you would, that you would want to go in. Um, you know, you can kind of begin to see, uh, how this is all going to work. And just for, um, just for the sake of this, I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of, uh, approach the, like rendering the head a little bit more, um, just to kind of see you, like, to show you how, like, I would, uh, I'd begin to get some detail in. I don't like to work with really sharp pencils, like, until the very end, uh, just because you're more concerned with, like, depositing value down. So, at some point during your drawing, you're gonna have gone through and then realized that, you know, at this point, I've only made, like, you know, a value about that dark, but, you know, I have really dark values that I can get to. So I need to push some values down. Pick those spots, really, uh, really figure out where those values are. Go ahead and knock them way, way down. Just to establish some benchmarks. And what this does is it opens up, uh, opens up space in the value range for you to get, uh, get darker with your midtones or what have become your midtones at this point. So laying in that dark changed the uh, change the head totally. Now I can go in. I can throw some value down on, on what are going to be lights. I can start working into more of the darks. I know that the, that the eye itself is going to be a highlight, but uh, there's going to be a highlight right in the in the eyeball, but around it, you know, is good, definitely going to be a little darker. So I can go ahead and put the push those values down. Might be a little highlight on the feathers around the head, so I'm going to leave just like a little touch of touch of stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and start actually finding a little more of the uh, the outline, the contour of the form, which you know is important to find, but not till you're you're well established into the drawing. And that you've created the forms that you want. So um, the problem with uh, outlining too early is that you're, you've committed to this outline, and if you need to change it, you know, it's really, really kind of difficult.
Again, I'm going through and just like finding some really dark spots, making them really dark, pushing them, pushing them pretty far down. And then, you know, that makes something look, something else look a little bit lighter. And I'm going to another area, you know, pushing that value down, uh, nailing down some more darks, and then uh, and moving on back and forth through this sort of uh, through this sort of process. Um, so you can see now that that I pushed some of the values that uh, you know the uh, the head is starting to pop out and starting to look very uh, look very raven like. Um, and uh, essentially, what you what you'd want to do is just kind of carry this idea through the whole process and uh, and then maybe later at the end after you block in all these values push them down then you'll kind of be able to create some some like wing texture and draw individual feathers just um, just to uh, uh, create some interest you know um, uh, but don't get too bogged down in like the detail of drawing like every individual feather um, really what I would do if I were approaching this is uh, uh, dig into some feathers here, get a lot of detail here because this has like the greatest amount of, of highlight and contrast and then I would actually pick up a wing uh, like a feather down here and then I would probably differentiate like three or four of the major the major feathers like down in the dark area and just work within really dark values for a while because um, that would kind of like make the uh, the dark areas pretty interesting um, uh, so that's uh, that's it. Um, I hope that that helps and uh, put you in the right direction for your uh, for your next drawing. You might want to take another uh, another stab at drawing drawing a raven because it's um, an interesting problem. And just remember to go back into the idea of of these like of the value the value scale. Um, you know that most of a raven is gonna you know exist within you know really dark. In really dark values with this huge jump skipping over a lot of values into uh, into the highlights that's it this has been me and McLean with another learn art subreddit uh, answer um, and again check out au squared.com I'll be putting uh, some new stuff up on there um, all the time basically so thanks a lot <laughs>